Hi everyone, it's me, Darlene. Tonight's video is going to be quite fascinating, I'm sure. I am going to boil a red frank. <laughs> I went shopping yesterday to Walmart, did a little tag along with me to Walmart, and I bought my mother some red franks. And you can see two are missing so far. She had one immediately when I got home from the store, and she just had one now. Since I was buying those, and since I didn't have a concoction planned, I asked you guys if you'd like to see me make a hot dog. And I know red franks are very famous in Maine. I think they started in Maine. I'm trying to find some history, but it's a little bit scattered. I do know that they are in other states besides Maine. I've had some of you already tell me, I think somebody even said they had them in Tennessee, which maybe they have spread out to there by now, but I know that it used to be just like East Coast or Northeast had Red Franks and like nobody else in the world did. First of all, just a little bit about what we call these things. Since I mentioned it, everybody's like, well, what's a Red Frank? Never heard of it. When I say the word Frank, I am talking about the actual link. Some people call them wieners. We call them franks or frankfurters. I'm sure in other countries there are other names for them. They're considered a sausage because they're just ground up meat and byproducts, I'm sure, formed into a link. When I say hot dog, I'm usually referring to the finished product. You put your wiener or your frankfurter into the bun and then that's a hot dog but people do also call just the wiener a hot dog all kinds of names for these things what makes red franks so special is that they are filled with red dye that is probably a cancer causing ingredient <laughs> and they are in a natural casing that's the good part even though it sounds disgusting but the meat that is in this wiener, I don't know why I'm all of a sudden calling it wiener. I think I'm just starting to like that word. Go back to calling it a Frank. <laughs> Not to be confused with the Frank's wiener. That was bad. It's a natural casing. The meat is stuffed into the small intestines of lamb. Yes, we're eating lamb intestines. So what is so good about these Franks is that when you bite into them, they pop and that juice from the red dye comes flowing out and it's just really really yummy now you can get natural casing franks without the red dye they're just not red i don't know if that's something that you can get elsewhere i don't know if it's the natural casing part that is popular on the east coast or if it's the fact that they're red anyway there's several brands that make these these happen to be km i also have seen jordans and then here like if we go to a grocery store and there's a deli you can find red franks in the deli section and just say you know i'll i'll take three francs please or a pound and a half of francs or whatever that's how popular red franks are here to make the hot dog we have two different kinds of rolls these are the hot dog rolls not the preferred roll in this household, but it's what Walmart had. Hot dog rolls are brown on both sides, and they're slit on the side. So you just open that up on the side, put your frank in there, and put whatever uh, condiments you want, and you got a hot dog. What we prefer is what they call frankfurter rolls. And they're the white sides, and they open on top, so it, and it's like a square bottom, so it can sit up right and you can add your fixings to your hot dog those are really good if you want to do a grilled hot dog because you can butter the sides and put them on a frying pan and grill them you can actually grill these too if you want but i grew up with steamed hot dogs that's what we did we boiled the franks and we used to have like a little thing that we'd put over the pan with holes and you'd put your bun on there and let that steam now, I still boil the franks. I don't like to cook a frank in the microwave. I like it to boil and get some of that salt and stuff out of there. And then I just put the bun in the microwave for just not even 10 seconds, and that's perfect. Once you have your frank in the roll, you can add just about anything. But if you were to go like to a baseball game and buy a hot dog, you're going to be offered mustard, relish, ketchup, onion, 
those are the popular things and celery salt is pretty popular too. You can add any or all of those. Uh, like my mother, her favorite is mustard and relish. I like mustard relish and ketchup. Oh, she likes mustard relish and onion. I would like mustard relish, ketchup, and onion, but I can't digest raw onions anymore, so I have to skip the onion. It just makes me sick. Uh, but another thing you can do is you can have mayo if you want. You can have sauerkraut is very popular around here. That You could put sauerkraut on it, or you could put chili, make a chili dog. You could put cheese. Somebody suggested hot sauce. Yes, you can certainly put... The they said you should put Frank's red hot sauce on the hot red Frank's. I just generally like my hot dog to be just my red Frank with ketchup, mustard, relish, and sadly, no longer onion. One thing I did find is it seems that it did start in Maine way back in like 1891. Two brothers that uh, wanted to be different, so they made the Frank's red and used the natural casing. If I find anything else, I'll just link down below and you guys can go look up some info. So what I'm just going to do is I'm going to just boil one over there. I will show you. And somebody asked me, does the water turn red? Yes, it does. And if you boil them long enough, they really beef up inside and they'll eventually split. I like them pre-split because I want it to pop in my mouth when I bite it. That's the fun part. Oh, let me tell you what's in these babies. It says... They even have instructions for grilling or pan frying or stove top or microwave. Stove top, easy. Boil water. Add frankfurter. Simmer. Six to eight minutes. Ingredients are beef and pork. And you can only imagine what parts of the beef and pork you're getting. Water, corn syrup, and then contains 2% or less of salt, potassium, things that I can no longer pronounce. And Oh, and then it says red dye number three. That good old number three red dye in a natural lamb casing. Didn't they use lamb casings for something else once upon a time? <laughs> for kids, cut frankfurter lengthwise, then slice into small pieces before serving. Really? They have to tell you how to cut it to serve to kids? Oh, and they're also called red snappers, but I can promise you we have never in this house ever said red snapper to describe this. But it's because they're red and they snap in your mouth. Our KM Old Time Reds are made with the finest, juiciest cuts of butcher grade beef and pork. Blended with premium spices, making them mild yet flavorful. Natural casings seal in all the juices to unleash a burst of flavor with the snap of every mouth-watering bite. Says made with premium cuts of beef and pork. That means maybe they use the tongue instead of the toenails? I don't know. I don't think cows or pigs have toenails, do they? <laughs> I'm pretty sure. I don't know, they say premium cuts. I don't know. I find it hard to believe. I can almost promise you that there's tongue in here. Hey, in my house, we loved beef tongue when I was a kid. That was premium to us. These are pricey. I don't buy them too often because they are pricey. But a lot of times when I go to Rogers, the little market that you guys see me go to every now and then, they sell them in, you know, just behind the counter. So sometimes I'll just get like two for my mother. I'll figure out how much I paid per pound for these. They're as much as $8 a pound for junk that we probably would not even want to feed our cat if we knew what was really in there. I paid four bucks for 12 ounces. So four divided by 12 times 16. Oh, so this was good. Five thirty-three a pound. I'll be getting mamacita some more of these. And I know there's often a coupon for a dollar off. All right, I'm just going to go over and boil, and I will show you the water getting red, and then we will put this hot dog together, and I will take a bite. Are you so excited? I have water, and we will not watch the pot because we want it to boil. This is starting to boil. I'm just going to plop this baby in there. And I'm just going to let it boil for a few minutes, and I'll show you. I have quite a bit of water in there, so it might not get too red, but I'll show you. We are boiling. I am just going to go put this in the microwave for literally, like, between 5 and 10 seconds. I have the burner off. I'm just going to let that settle down. 
See if you can see that it's red. Can you tell there's a little bit of red in there? Oh, that's looking more red. I think they don't use as much red dye as they used to when I was a kid because the water would really be red. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, my bread is just so slightly steamy. And some people put the fixings on the bottom and then the frank on top. I like my fixings on the top. So let's see. Hmm, how am I going to grab this baby? Get in there. Okay. I'm doing this um, while holding the camera. I wasn't quite prepared. To... I like a lot of mustard. Oh, my ketchup's not open yet. Hang on. I wish I would have had the camera running when I just did what I just did. <laughs> the ketchup. I made a little bit of a mess. Oh, gee whiz. Well, that's not attractive. And then a relish. A sweet relish, not dill. Dill is a sin on a hot dog. Let's go to the computer. I wanted so much to be hungry for this. I mean, that's all I looked forward to last night was tomorrow I will be doing the hot dog video and I'm going to let myself get hungry. And Sandy and I went out today. We didn't get home till like 4.30 and I was famished. What did I eat? Oh, I ate a half a burrito that I bought for my mother thinking it was an egg roll. We swear the buffet said egg roll and it was a burrito so after a couple bites my mother's like this is weird and I was like it's a burrito so I ate that then I had a little bit of coleslaw and now I'm suddenly full but I'm gonna still force myself to take a delicious bite of this this is what we've got I don't know if you'll hear it pop I doubt it oh Mmm. Ow. Mmm. You guys know that that tooth I had pulled was not my problem. And I have a very sore mouth still. Mmm. Oh. That is delicious. I wish you guys could taste. Here, try. A little bit. A little bite right there. Wow. Mmm. Okay. That's just flat out delicious. So I hope you enjoyed this episode of Darlene's Concoctions. I will try to come up with some other like main type things or just anything. You guys can always give me ideas if there's something that you'd like to see me make and I don't care if it's as simple as a sandwich. My goodness my Fluffinutta sandwich has gotten a lot of views. <laughs> that was just peanut butter and marshmallow. Hi <coughs> Blick. Hi Blick please. <coughs> I don't think Heimlich maneuver works. If you've just choked on your own spit. <laughs> oh my god. Can you imagine if I had a cooking show, how classy that would be? <laughs> you know when you choke on your own spit? <coughs> and then you can't talk? And your eyes water? That's the stage I'm in. I'm gonna have to just say goodbye. Oh, I'm so proud to be a YouTuber. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Thumbs up. I don't know if you can see the ketchup mishap I had. <laughs> I took the paper off, put the cover back on, and it looked like the cover was sealed. So I said, well, I'll squeeze it and see if it comes out. And it was like a, like a volcano. <laughs> oh my God, I even got some in my hair. <laughs> Okay, what am I supposed to do? Thumbs up. Please subscribe. Did I do it right? I have, I don't, I don't do backward lettering good with my left hand. Please subscribe. Please thumbs up. And I will be back with more soon. And share if you are not too embarrassed to share this video. <laughs> Thank, you so, oh. Thank you so much. Bye.